Gracias, Hillel. Thank you so much. You know, Ambassador, my dear friend, Ambassador Flores, Honduras, said at the beginning that this would not be an easy conversation. Listening to Luis Almagro, to Maria Corina, undoubtedly it is a very painful conversation for Venezuelans who are suffering and the ones who are witnessing in an increasing way that seems to be not to have an end. I want to thank very specially Ambassador Flores for the initiative and our friends, the ambassadors of Estonia and Ukraine, which shows that regardless of the geographical distance, we can be united through common values, in this case, the defense of human rights. When, when I represented a free Venezuela at the United Nations, we were leading participants in the conflicts of Yugoslavia, Somalia, Rwanda, Cambodia, Mozambique, Angola. It didn't matter where human rights were for us a universal uh, subject of uh, compromise to all of us. After I left the United Nations, I, was, uh, I, was, I became an advisor to Kofi Annan, the Secretary General, exactly when the uh, Human Rights Council was created and was presented to the General Assembly. In that time, we, uh, before that, uh, when I represented Venezuela, I refused to participate as a member of the Human Rights Commission, the way that was called at the time, which was presided by the Iran, we thought was a mockery and affront to the human rights convictions of all the membership. But uh, uh, today, when you see that two, two days ago, uh, Maduro, a narco-tyrant, was able to speak at the Human Rights Council, people are asking, how come a, a Council of Human Rights can invite to speak a, a, a person like Maduro? I think this is a point of reflection for the whole membership, but because Venezuela is there or not, Maduro is there, not Venezuela, really after defeating the, the oldest democracy in Latin America, Costa Rica. It should be a matter of reflection of what is wrong at the United Nations that in events such as that could take place. In February 1920, uh, under the sponsorship of UN Human Rights and the most valuable participation of its director, Elaine Neuer, we started a campaign a global campaign to suspend Maduro from the membership in the council. People said that it could not be done. The same thing was told to Hillel and his board years back, that Libya could not be suspended, and they were successful and Libya was suspended. Uh, why? Uh, because it was a case of gross uh, violators of human rights. Uh, I don't have to repeat what so emotionally and rightly, Maria Corina uh, and Luis Almagro said today about the, the dimension of the Venezuelan tragedy. Both the two consecutive high commissioners of the United Nations, Prince, Prince Said uh, and uh, Madame Bachelet, both have certified that crimes against humanity are being committed in Venezuela. But then the Human Rights Council sent in, in 2017 a gentleman, Mr. Sayas, and recently a lady from Belarus, Russia, not special, a very democratic country, uh, that prepared a sort of a report a la carte uh, for Maduro, so Maduro could use it as an issue of propaganda, which he did uh, two days ago. I would like to, to present to you a couple of reflections. There was a, a Colombian named Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar was the world's most important narco trafficker. He did try to control Colombia. He couldn't. But amazingly, Maduro has been able, as a narco trafficker, been able to reach and become the head of the Venezuelan power. So what Escobar could not reach with all his wealth and power in Colombia, Maduro has achieved in Venezuela. Where in the world is today a man that has, is a reward of $20 million 
for him to be uh, in prison. Where in the world do you have a pre uh, the head of a, a government that has two sons in jail for narco traffickers? Where in the world do you have a man whose wife is accused also of crimes against humanity? Only in the Human Rights Council such a man exists. Nowhere else in the world. You, we have tried to explain to the members of the Human Rights Council that uh, we wanted to save them from the embarrassment to be joined by a repugnant company of the representative of the narco tyranny in Venezuela. We have tried to explain to them that we cannot continue to be viewed as a normal Latin American traditional dictatorship. No, this is a super criminal narco tyranny, uh, uh, militarized with links to terrorists. It's precisely the opposite of what Kofi Annan had in mind when he proposed the new, the creation of the Human Rights Council. And I was there to witness that that was precisely the intention. It was not a, a good idea at all for the United Nations to celebrate the 75th anniversary, bringing a, a country to, to the, the tyranny of Maduro. I refuse to call to bring Venezuela because that's not Venezuela that is sitting in the council. It's a criminal corporation allowed by, by the majority of the members of the United Nations, which really is a matter of, should be a matter of great concern and reflection to the whole world that the United Nations could bring such a regime to be a member of nothing less of the Human Rights Council, which in my view should be more important uh, politically, morally, and ethically than even the United Nations Security Council. Uh, today, more than 60 countries do not recognize precisely this tyranny because they consider it to have violated human rights, uh, not allow free elections, persecuting people, we have more people running from the country today as an exodus, bigger than Syria. The Syria has a horrible civil war where we have another kind of war, difficult to define it how, but it's a country that people are running away for hunger, for persecution, for insecurity, which makes our case probably the most powerful case today that should be held by the international community. The, My last point has to be with the campaign that we have. Hillel Neuer, with his UN Watch uh, organization, have done more for us in the last 10, 15 years in Geneva than anybody else. Uh, and he asked me to, uh, to head the campaign. This campaign has today about 180,000 signatures. We need more. I hope that the people who watch this program, this, uh, this Zoom, will be able to sign this petition. We have to speak with a louder voice. We might not get what we want to suspend Maduro, but we must not fail in attempting to do it. I think it's a, it's, it's a compromise of solidarity. And that's why uh, Luis Almagro has been, I believe, our greatest defender throughout these years, because the ambassador of Honduras, Elizabeth Flores, have seconded and been solidary with everything we do. And now we have two countries geographically distant but close to us in human rights like uh, Ukraine and Estonia uh, supporting our case. It should be an encouragement for all the countries to follow that. We need more voices to be heard and for that we need more signatures. And I tell the people it is not a waste of time. It's never a waste of time to sign for something where your heart, your feelings are committed for a country that used to be prosperous, free, and help most of the other countries at the United Nations when they were in peril. I thank you very much, Hilal.